Okay, hi, this is part two of the first day of the 30 day coloring challenge. And we're doing the second part of this card, which is the card assembly and the popped flower here. So bear with me, I didn't want to make one long, massive video. So I have my background that I colored. Um, I created the dots that you saw and I used the stencil on top. So I didn't love how the stencil, it was a little too graphic with the flowers. I wanted the flowers to kind of look graphic. Uh, I don't know. So anyways, um, okay, so you just saw me scribble some marker on the packaging. I said, oh, I have this block. I'm going to use this instead. So I have my, I stamped the flower again with Memento ink, Copic friendly ink. And I'm using the same colors that I used on my background. I used the lighter color first, and now I'm adding the darker color here. And I'll be taking the lighter color here and picking up, you can see it on the tip there. I just gave you a quick flash, but I'm picking it up with the light color and this is helping that these two colors are just way too far off to blend nicely. So this is the perfect way to make it happen. And it's a great way to get mileage out of your stamps. So. I'm just doing this little section because I know you guys have other things to do and you want to color. So keep in mind you can color with anything. Um, so I'm just doing this little section on this flower. And like in the last video, I'm using the COO just to lighten the tips on the petals here. And then I'll go ahead and finish the rest of the flower off camera just to save time. Now in this particular one, I decided to add some red, you know, there's some uh, detail in the leaves and I'm just going to be lazy and color those red. And now I'm adding some of the accent dark purple color that I added in my other flowers and then I'll blend that out again. So I think I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. I'm really doing the same thing but I wanted you to see it on this flower. Now, and to blend that out, I'm using this again. Coming with Copics, it's kind of like a lot of, I describe it as give and take, but you add, you use a lighter color, so it takes a little color away, and then you add in more dark color, but in the end, you just get a rich looking piece of coloring. You get a beautiful image that's nice and rich. Okay, so I'm just going to finish blending these out and then I'll be moving on to the petals. And I'm using the same colors. Um, you see them all here on the right. And I have them on the right in the order that I use them. Now, on the petals, I'm using some dark purple and then I'll be using a green and some blue then. Just very easy, simple blending. I'm going to be cutting this out so it's super easy to blend off the page. I always think that makes it easier. Um, and then I'll go ahead, I'll be outlining the petals. I'm scribbling some, I wanna, these two colors don't work so good together, so I'm doing the palette technique, just picking up some of that purple, blending it out with the green. And I really want you to try this. I think you'll like it. Now, always clean that tip off on the side. You saw me scribble some green there. You want to remember to do that. Okay, now, um, I'm so excited for the challenge. My head's spitting a little bit. Um, well, so I think I'm just going to chat a little bit about the coloring challenge. I do have, the, um, there'll be a, a link to my blog, um, and on my blog I have a video explaining the coloring challenge and if you have questions, but basically in a nutshell, you can color anything. 
I'm posting for 30 days. You don't have to do it every day. It's only if you want. Um, some people might just do the petals on a flower. That might be the only time that they can carve out for themselves. And then some people have a little bit more time or they're night owls or they need less sleep, but they have a little more time to color. So um, they might do a whole flower. But whatever you do, you know, if you're just finding a little bit more time for you, I think that's important. And I've mentioned before that coloring is like the new yoga. Um, it really truly is proven to help you relax and that it is a de-stressor. So put on some music, have a glass of wine if you drink, or have a mocktail, a fake cocktail, or just some sparkling water with lime and a pretty glass, or and just relax and just kind of get in the mood to have a little downtime. So, um, so did you notice I say so a lot? But what I used to try and edit them out, but I'm over that. Um, and then if you don't want to say so, you say, um, <laughs> and I almost said so again. So, uh, whatever you just, we got to get over that. Um, oh my, to finish this flower, I just, as I mentioned, outlined everything with my Sharpie marker. I like to use a Sharpie because it doesn't bleed. And then most of you know I warm a gel pen up on my finger it just seems to flow better and there's some stamen in the center of this flower and I kind of wanted to do them yellow but I colored over them so the easiest thing to do is to grab the white gel pen and once that's dry I'll take my sharpie and trace over that so obviously I just cut the flower out I like to cut half out and then grab my memento marker and finish off those white lines, the white edge on the flower and give it a nice finished look by taking my marker and doing that. Um, and this is how I get in the little nooks and crannies, I flip it over. And then I'm gonna cut out the other half and do the same thing. Now I'm tracing over the white gel pen stamen. Um, it's so hard not to say, um, oh my. If I didn't point it out, you might not notice it so much. <laughs> so there's the base and the flower. I have some vellum here and I scored it and I, I'm taping it to the back. I don't want to use any glue. I don't want to use vellum tape. I don't want anything. This is the easiest way. You don't see anything because there's nothing. It's a nice, clean look on the front of your card. It, it's it, a very like minute little, it sticks out from the paper ever so slight and you could add a tiny little glue dot if you wanted, but kind of adds to the character of the card. Now I'm grabbing my various ink. I use it all the time. I just want to dampen this rag and I have to be careful. I don't want it on the petals, only on the leaves. And I'm just getting a little bit of texture on those leaves. I'm going to be traveling, so I have this little bottle. I always take it with me. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm talking too much. Um, I recently did this. Uh, it's a great way to finish off a card rather than finding cardstock to match. And these two colors, you have to work them a little bit. So I'm going to super speed this. I'm just working it, working, working these colors. Um, and then it still wasn't going the way I wanted. So I ended up grabbing some of the various ink, vellum and various ink hide lots of mistakes or they make everything better. So that's the takeaway for today. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do that as you can see. And every now and then you see me like fluff up the nub the pile on the, the rag. Now I'm just doing a wash of that purple color, the pinky purple all over everything, and then a little bit more of that. I removed this from the camera and I, I used my heat gun just to dry it a little bit. 
So I put some white cardstock behind that. I popped my vellum panel. I have a pop of color on the inside and I'm really lazy. I like blank cards, but I'm like, come on, Kathy, you can do it. Find sentiment to work. And I like generic sentiments because I just never seem to have the right card. So this Painted Hugs is from Simon Says Stamp. It's a great size. It's small. It fits on almost every card. And it's not too thin. And it's not, I like how it's thin in some areas and thick in some. So it's, it's a wonderful size and for everyone. All right, you got that. So I'm coloring the hugs just like I did the flower. Also, you could just co color a strip of paper, kind of like I did the frame, and then die cut your word from that. If I kept the hugs in the paper that I cut it from, in the negative part of the paper, it'd be easier to color. But I didn't do any of that, so it's a little bit more challenging holding it down while I'm coloring it. But, you know, if that's my only challenge for this month, that's I'm doing good. Okie doke. So I'm going to finish this and you could also not work it so much and use some various ink on this, which I don't think I did. Now I'm picking up, I scribbled some of that pinky purple down on the palette and I'm blending that out again, just like I did on the petals. Super easy. Now I use some foam. I die cut the hugs in foam and I want to offset it a little bit so you see the black so it stands out more. And I use some glossy accents and then I like to use my paper piercer to pick up any glossy that might have gone out of the smooshed out. How's that for a technical term? And then I like to use a block just to hold that down nice and smooth, even, flat, and leave it on there for a few minutes. Now I have, I glued that to my card with some matte medium and I have two tiny blocks setting that onto the card. I slipped um, the XOXO behind the hugs and now I have Lucy's Little Things, her magic sequence mix. I know it's a little bit expensive, but it really goes a long way. Um, I, what the great thing is, there's such variety with the sequins that are in here. You don't have to like run around your craft room looking for different colors to go or anything. It's all in this one little package. So if you get this little pack and then you use it on many cards just for little accents, you have the variety of sizes and colors, or you could use it for a shaker card and get two, two or three out of it because you can add some others to mix in with this. So anyway, I love it. I just would love to have a big jar of all of her mixes. They're so, uh, they're just so pleasing to look at. So anyway, now I, I want to put one behind the XOXO and it's glued down flat. It's not popped up. So I cut a sequence in half and then I'm just tucking it ever so slightly behind that rather than shoving the whole sequence behind it. And then I just, um, this is how I put it back into this little baggie. And that's it. My card is finished. There you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Thumbs up if you like this. And if you don't like this, like those two people, give me a thumbs down, whatever you want. Um, so see you tomorrow for day two. Have a great day. Bye-bye.